Uh, so my name is Ali Pushahid and I'm responsible for running the development team and making sure that we have a sort of fluid um, pipeline when it comes to releasing our product. So this dashboard is uh, basically a status of our work items and what's going on in our releases. Um, so on the left side at the top you see uh, whip limits or working progress limits. So if you look at Kanban, um, which is sort of an agile process that software development companies use, there's this concept of whip limit which uh, the whole idea is you don't want to have a lot of work items in progress. So we track that and the idea is to keep the pipeline moving. So if you have a lot of items, let's say in QA ready, that usually means you don't have to go or you should avoid go and write more code because you have a lot of stuff going on that you still need to test. If you look at the next clip down, that basically tracks number of defects we have in different sort of severity, critical, major, and also their age. So we obviously have a target there. We don't want to have a, you don't want to have more than three critical defects, for instance, at the same time. And then the next one is more of a high level metric. It, uh, it's called cycle time. So it's basically the time it takes for us to take an issue from in progress to release or basically get it to customer's hand. So what we do here is we monitor the critical and major bugs and the goal is to really get them to our uh, production as soon as possible. As you see with critical issues for instance our average is about three days so that's how long it takes for us to fix, verify and get a defect across the board. Um, the other thing we track here is actually the list of critical and major issues. You see that on the right side at the bottom um, and also their age. Uh, so one of the things that's really important here for us is you know, what are those top issues that we have to fo focus on and how long they've been around. Uh, there are a few funny ones here, 800 days and whatnot. Um, that's mostly the way we are tracking it, but we usually like to keep that under a certain number of days um, unless something exceptional is happening. Uh, the other thing we are tracking here at the top is release, uh, so number of releases per month. This is more of a high level metric. Um, we tend to try to release every day and basically what you see is the trend uh, for this year. So this is used by myself, by managers in our team and also Scrum Masters. So this is our dev metrics dashboard and uh, so if you look at it, this is basically monitoring one metric for different teams. And that one single metric that I really love is called cycle time. Uh, so cycle time, again, it's the time it takes from when you have an issue, you start put it in progress state until you release it and it basically gets to the customers. The reason why I think cycle time is really important for any development team to monitor is because it's that one single metric that helps you understand your process um, and helps you understand whether you have bottlenecks or not. Uh, and looking at that over time is really valuable because as you see on this dashboard, uh, sometimes you see spikes and then you go and take a look and see, okay, so what happened here? Why cycle time this week suddenly jumped to 15 when it's always around sub seven, for instance. And you have, uh, you have to track cycle time for different teams because depending on what they do, their average is usually different. The other thing we do here is we track cycle time per state as well. So for instance, if you look at any of these charts, there's an average cycle time, which is the end-to-end -end cycle time, but there's also review and QA. So that's the time it takes in each of those states. And we have a target for that. For instance, if we talk about review in the bottom left chart, as you see, uh, sort of the review is at 3.2. Um, which is not ideal. We want it to be somewhere between one to two. And what that means is on average, it takes that team to do the code reviews about three days. So then the question becomes, how can you shorten then that amount so that you can have a more efficient timeline? So usually Scrum Masters and myself look at this and if we see any anomalies that is different from the usual average, we ask the question, how can we improve it? What happened this sprint that may have changed our cycle?